We are entering the arcade, starting from Superior, and we'll be exiting on Euclid, but I wanted to showcase the architecture in this building as well as the other arcade. So it says shops are on the first floor, this is a newsstand here, and a food court. So this may not be the best day to showcase because it's Columbus Day and certain things are going to be closed. We do have Rising Star Coffee Roasters there, which is open. Uh, this is the United States Post Office, and because it's a federal holiday, the post office is closed today. But the main thing is to look at the architecture that's in this building. So let's go up these stairs to get a better perspective of it. When it comes to the holiday season, it's always nice when they have, they don't have a ton of decorations, but when there's wreaths up and I believe they have a tree somewhere that they put up. And really the video probably won't do it justice in terms of the architecture that you see. So let's continue up the stairs. The Hyatt Regency is also here. I guess if I never knew this, that that's where the hotel lobby is located. So if you're checking in at the Hyatt, you would go in there. This is 1890 at the arcade. So, don't think they're open right now, but let's see some of the things they have. So if you want an all-American breakfast, Two eggs, any style, choice of bacon, pork sausage, turkey sausage or ham served with hash browns, and choice of English muffin, white wheat or rye toast, that's $14. And you've got your side dishes, beverages, buttermilk pancakes for $13. festive decorations for the Halloween slash Thanksgiving period coming up. Well, here's a throwback picture. Unfortunately, there's a lot of glare, but let me see if I can get closer. That looks like a very old school picture. It says 1895 Republican National League meeting hosted in the historic arcade. Thomas Edison's shop is visible in the lower left corner. Rumor has it that he would knock out windows of any other shop selling the phonograph as he held the patent to it. So interesting. Again, I wish there wasn't glare. Maybe if I turn, I can get rid of some of the glare. So this 1890 does have some nice decorations. What's shaking? You got the little <laughs> little squirrel down here. Across the way there you have a luxury spa. Downstairs, I don't see too many stores. I mean, you've got some decorations in the storefronts, but not a store itself. Like that one has, almost looks like wedding related things or dresses. That one has a couple of pictures of Cleveland. There's a State Farm agent. So like I said, as I was heading in here, you're not gonna have 
a ton of stores that are like eye popping or like, oh, I have to see the stores. But it's more about appreciating the, the look and feel of a historic building. Here's a chiropractor. Sorry, I'm laughing again because just proving the point that you know, you're not having fancy shops, so to speak. Let's see. So this is where the Heinen's building is, I believe. The Cleveland Trust intersection of Euclid and East 9th Street. Let's see what this artwork is here. It says Playhouse Square, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I can see in there. A painting of Key Tower. One of the Cleveland script signs. What else do we have in here? Cleveland Browns Die Hard. And Cleveland Browns Football Club from 1948. Team picture. Cleveland Press, Best for Live Sports. Five cents. <laughs> Indians official scorecard. Got a Liberty with Bob Hope down there. Picture of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And then the old Cleveland Municipal Stadium. I only was in there for one game and that was when I was really little. I have a vision in my head of, I think it was Nolan Ryan pitching. I mean, I don't, I don't remember Nolan Ryan. And, you know, I remember that he was pitching at the game, but I don't like remember the how he looked and stuff. But it, I, we were far away, so everything looked like ants. There's another picture of the arcade. For some reason there's a Eiffel Tower picture featured. Daydreams and tea. There is a food court downstairs, but like I said, it's all going to be closed right now, I think. I don't even know if there were businesses still left at the food court. Let's see here, what's advertised here? Yeah. I don't know if anything's even open during, since COVID happened. So yeah, unfortunately, not much to see in terms of shops. Better to come here just as a quick pass through and uh, taking pictures, enjoying the architecture. A nice cut through from Superior to Euclid Avenue. And then this is I believe it's Pizza 216. That's probably the most lively place besides Chocolate Bar on the right side here. check out the other arcade Let's see if there's any more current stores and activity in there my hunch is to say yes but we shall see there's two hallways to the 5th street arcade 
I'll start in the one that's by Colossal Cupcake. Or no, that's the other entrance. I guess I'll come out that one and go in this one that's near the popcorn place. Always nice to put a festive pumpkin in your display. So you've got the Euclid Arcade. Shop small, shop local. Got a pull on these doors. Nice little artwork. Right away, as soon as I come in, that smell is profound of the popcorn place. Oh. Look at all that decadent. So let's see what we've got here. Oh, here's a Voices of Cleveland thing. Art by Garth. Although it's unfortunately down a little bit. Elephant in the room. America's living room. You've got the Haymarket Cut Company here. It looks like a small business with some neat little pet things. Well, this arcade's already way, way better than the original arcade because you ha actually have small shops that are open. Cleveland in a box. So I'm not sure exactly what it is. This box rocks. So I guess it's just maybe Cleveland area items and you fit as many of them as you can in a box and maybe it's a certain price. That's an interesting concept. A Cleveland in a box. There's a Metro T-Mobile store over there. Some type of spindle artwork here. Two of them. Gallery jewelry is closed at the moment. Handmade jewelry. Spray tanning over there. Little florist shop here, paper florist, so it makes for some nice decorations. We have a sushi 86, poke 86, poke bowls and bubble tea, design and bar boutique. We Bleed Ohio t-shirt company. We've got some Indian shirts. I like the one of the dog pound. Reminds me of Swagger with the Here We Go Cleveland Woof Woof. Cleveland Leg Lamp. Some Cavaliers related shirts. I wonder if they actually print the shirts down there too. They probably do. Bob House. Looks like not too many of the eating places are open right now. Some type of balloon place on the left here.
Here's Johnnyville Woods, so a very fancy outdoor or outside uh, display. Doesn't look like they're open at the moment. Let's see here, what do they sell? Is it just, looks like uh, various artwork pieces and knickknacks and paintings. A lot of custom baseball bats too. See if you can peek inside at all. Even more bats and artwork. Got the holiday lights strung up at the top. And ornaments. Let's see here, what are the commandments for being happy? Free your heart from hatred, free your mind from worry, give more, expect less, and love simply. Rock and roll theater. There were two chairs over here. I wonder why the Jurassic Park theme music is playing in the background. <laughs> Never heard, never heard that as a tune. I'm thinking of the right tune, right? I don't know if you could all be able to hear it on the video. We have a couple of bobbleheads mixed in here. Now oh, there's Omar Biscal. I wonder if this stuff is on sale or if it's just a display of someone's big collection. I assume they make custom baseball bats. And that's what it looks like. For example, Cleveland Browns Bring the Wood, made by Johnnyville Woods. Oh no. They even have a Guardians one already, complete with the logo. <laughs> Gotta take a picture of that. The Browns bat and the Guardians. I wonder, there may be a parking lot down there because I see P up here. Best tacos at Barrio, a little advertisement for it. Now we're coming out by Prospect. Oh, they do have a listing of all the shops that are in there. We passed by some of those. We're gonna go around to the other side and see what we missed. Vincenzo's Pizza and Pasta. I think that's on the other side here too. Definitely know Barrio was well attended, especially if there's a sporting event going on. When you get to the evening hours, across, across the way there is Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Vincenza's Pizza and Pasta. My mom absolutely loved this place when she was a kid. Or I don't know, a kid, but a young adult. But it'd be nice to know how their pizzas tasted modern day or their pastas. So let's see how this, this end of the arcade compares. This whole area in this first part is Vincenzo's. So they have more than enough seating. Looks like the pasta is over here on the left and the pizza and subs were 
more by the entrance. Top cash paid for gold, jewelry, and coin. So dis colonial discount jewelers. Gems Boutique. Cleveland Cavaliers Championship. <laughs> Originals, arts and posters of rock and roll. I'm not sure if this is a outdoor shop. They have some clothing articles out and a picture of a cupcake. It makes me think of colossal cupcakes. Here's Addie's Diner. They're open right now. Breakfast served all day. Breakfast special, two eggs, home fries, add bacon, sausage or ham, $6.39. Chocolate chip pancakes, $7.99. Like I said, that's where the food selection would be, but most of those places are closed right now. Bobby's Parlor. So I assume this is a barber shop. But I like the decoration up front. <laughs> the chair with the dog sitting on it. Bobby sees classic barber shop. Even more decorations here. The old gas tank from Texaco. Well, they have a lot of nice knickknacks in there. Oh, even a Dalmatian with a brown sweater on him. <laughs> Victoria Jewelers. So here on the left here we have another jewelry store. I wonder if these are people who have been to the jewelry store. Like John Travolta. I think Machine Gun Kelly. Stipe down on the far left there. Got an NFL necklace, Johnny. That wasn't for Johnny Football, was it? <laughs> oh God, it was. I see the finger thing there. The money sign. OBJ. Oh, I love the mini NFL helmets. Beauty and Wellness Place. There's a Brass Tech Shoe Repair. Coco's Plants. You can't buy happiness, but you can buy a plant. Good point, right? <laughs> Plants make people happy. Coco's Chalky Paints, so there's two two different stores for Coco, or maybe it's all wrapped in one, but there's Coco's Painted Furniture down here as well. Oh, and there's, yeah, Coco's Chalky Paints, so they own quite a bit of stores over here. 
This is the state of Ohio. Here's the tea lab. Zombia sculpture, jewelry, and souvenirs. Mike the Hatter. Yeah. Huh. Ooh. This is where you can get all the nice hats in Cleveland. <laughs> And there's more hats even across the uh, across the way. Let's get a better shot from outside. So on this end you get either Rocket Fizz or Colossal Cupcake. And then this is Stone Fruit Coffee. So yes, I would, what I would recommend if you're going to visit the two arcades in downtown Cleveland, go to the original arcade first, which is just right over there, pass through it for the architecture, and then afterward come by for the actual local shops and uh, support them and look inside of them over at the 5th Street Arcade. Thanks for tuning in to the arcade tours and if you like this video feel free to subscribe and hit the like button thanks for watching Finishing off my arcade tour here at Vincenzo's and I decided to try the lasagna pasta which they said will be ready in 15 minutes and then I also got a piece of pizza. Well, I had regular pizza but then I also had deep dish variety so I got a deep dish pepperoni. I don't know which one they're known for but this one looks very good so I'm going to go ahead and try it. So it's good. The bottom has a crisp to it, they put it back in the oven before they served it. So let's see if you can hear it. Crisp is good. You know, it tastes fresh. Not, not necessarily a special, special flavor to it, but it tastes like good pizza. Alright, now it's time to dive into the meat lasagna. Mm, looks yummy. Very good tasting lasagna, great flavor. See, I was about to scarf it all down before I... Before I could do it. Yeah, it tastes, tastes really good. Well, thanks for checking out the bonus footage of me trying Vincenza's. So the pizza was good, as I said. But the, the real treat was the lasagna. I was like, oh my god. I loved it. When I get uh, lasagna, it doesn't matter how big it, big it is, because that was a pretty big piece. I just like scarf it down and like that piece was gone in probably less than five minutes. Just something about good lasagna that my stomach just craves it and can uh, get it down quickly. Now I'm stuffed though. I used to get lasagna during my lunch break all the time from this place downtown called Finucci's. That was prior to the pandemic. But fortunately the pandemic forced them to shutter their doors. Like I would get their lasagna like two to three times a week if I could. 
So I haven't had my Italian fix for like two years. And I, I was surprised, I mean, granted, I think it was $6.95 for the lasagna. But that's a decent price in my book for that size of a lasagna. So even though it's a little bit of a way away from where I work, it might be worth every now and then coming down there and then indulging in it. Anyway, again, thanks for watching the arcade tours and see you next time.